My name is David Ferguson, uh, bringing you a little NetTuts tutorial today on how to create your own Alfred app extensions. The most notable new add-on or feature to 0.99 is the ability to create your own extensions. If you haven't seen Alfred app's extension support, this is not a full uh, native plugin API, but it can get you started creating some really cool stuff. I'm going to show you today how to create a new shell script that will allow you to pull data or lorem ipsum text from lipsum.com and store it in the clipboard for use. That way you, uh, all you web developers and designers don't actually have to go to a website, call up Alfred real quick, tell it what you want. It goes out to the web, grabs the data for you, and puts it in the clipboard so it's ready for use. So much easier. Let's get started with a few things. As I said, uh, 0.99 is not available in the Mac App Store just yet. Hopefully it'll be available in a day or so. For now, just go grab it at uh, alfredapp.com. I will be using one PHP library today that is called the PHP Simple HTML DOM Parser. Uh, I've used this for quite a few of my extensions just because it's so easy. You know, I, I admit there are probably other ways to grab the data out of the HTML that may be easier to some people, but this is just really simple. What this library does is it allows you to parse an HTML document and select items and objects out of it and their, uh, their text and values using simple selectors like jQuery would. Uh, if you're familiar with jQuery, this will be extremely simple for you. To get this extension, you will need this to uh, to follow this if you want. Uh, it's at simplehtmldom.sourceforge.net. Let's go ahead and get started. As I mentioned, we will be pulling data from lipsum.com. We will actually be submitting this exact form. It asks you for the number of items you want, what type of data you want, and you submit the button. And there you go. There's your output. It's five paragraphs of dummy data. Let's back up. Let's jump into Alfred and get started. So if you've not looked in Alfred 0.99, there are several options for the extension page. You can create shell scripts, run Apple scripts, run automated workflows, create search filters, or create file groups. Today we'll be working with the shell scripts. So let's go ahead and create a new one. We will go ahead and name this one uh, Lipsum Text, since that is what we will be grabbing. Enter your author name and under Created By, add your website under here, and I grabbed a quick little icon off of Google Images, just a little T for text. Let's go ahead and get it created. Lipsum Text extension was updated, and uh, we will give Alfred a title for this extension. This is what shows up when you start typing in the keyword for the extension inside of Alfred. So we'll just name this once again Lipsum Text and the description will be keyword here will be Lipsum. One thing I will go ahead and note real quick if you are making your own Alfred extensions this box right here the difference between the silent and not silent is the not silent will actually open a terminal window to run the commands that you give it in the command box a silent window will not. There is one other difference though. When the silent option is ticked, path is relative to the script path or script directory. If you uncheck this or untick it, the path is relative to the user's home directory. So make sure if you're referencing a certain file in your commands down here that you are uh, accessing the right path. One other thing that we will turn on for this tutorial is the display script output in Growl. The reason we're going to use that, I know some people don't like Growl, you don't actually have to use this. The only reason we're going to use it here is to pop up a little bubble to let you know that the Lipsum text has been retrieved and is ready for you in the clipboard. Let's hop over to the terminal real quick and let me show you a few things. Some people do not actually know that you can run PHP via the command line. There's several different command line flags that will allow you to do this. I'll show you two. One is the minus R flag. So you would do PHP dash R and then inside of quotes you would just enter in whatever command that you wanted to run. Uh, here we're just going to echo the word date on a new line and there it is. The other option I'm going to show you today is PHP dash F. And what that does is it specifies that you will be running an actual PHP script from the command line. Any output will be echoed back to the command line or can be piped into the next command, however you want to set it up. It can be done that way. So you would give it a PHP script. 
if you wanted to pass arguments into that script, you put uh, two hyphens and then the arguments here. Let's get out of the terminal and get back over to Alfred and let's get started. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and tell it that we're gonna run a script.php. We're gonna pass it our query. Now, if you haven't created an Alfred extension before, the query keyword right here means that the extension will be looking for input. It is required if you use it. There is no optional. If you want to make the input optional, I suggest you use something like a, uh, a safe word. Like if you do not want to provide input, give it a period and then have the script checked for a period. And if it finds a period, use the default value. Whatever you pass it is treated as a single string. It's not broken up into pieces. It is one string. That will be important once we get into the actual PHP. As I mentioned a moment ago, anything that is echoed back from the PHP script is available on the command line and can be piped into the next command. So here, we'll just pass the output from our PHP script directly into PB copy, which makes it available on the clipboard. So from there, the only other thing we're gonna do inside of Alfred is let it know that the ellipsum text is ready when the script is done. So now let's show our script in Finder and copy a few things over to get it ready. Let's grab our simple HTML DOM parser script. We'll come back to it in a minute. I'll show you how to use it. And the only other thing we need to do is to open a terminal here. See that we are in the script folder. I'm going to touch script.php to create that new file. Kill the terminal again, and we've got our script.php. So let's go ahead and close Alfred here and open up script.php. Now, when working with PHP from Alfred, I know it may be command line in general, I'm not sure. Always make sure that you do not use the short PHP open tag. Now that we're actually in our PHP, let's go ahead and include our simple HTML DOM.php, get it loaded up. The next step we want to do is to actually grab our, uh, our query string. When we use this query string in Alfred, we're going to actually be passing two parameters. They're just separated by a space. We're going to give it a numeric value that is the number of items you want and then a character value that is a character that denotes the type of data you want, whether it be a paragraph, a word, a byte, or a list. So you'll be passing something like this, lipsum 5p for paragraphs. So that's basically how it's going to look. All right, so back in our PHP, we're going to grab the, oh, we'll name it something a little different. We'll name it our uh, query, and it's going to be brought in from argv1 is where you save it from. It is a single string, as I mentioned. We're gonna wanna split that up. Now, you may want to add in checks to make sure that the first value is numeric and the second value is a character and you know there is a second character and all this other stuff. I'll leave that up to you. For this example, we're just gonna blow right through and just and show you how to create it and just kinda keep it somewhat basic. So from here, to split up the two pieces that we have, we're going to use the PHP explode function and we're going to explode based off of a space so that will break the two pieces at the space and make them two indexes in an array. So we're going to break it and so now query 0 will be the numeric value and query 1 will be the character value. The next thing we want to do is to actually, since we are using a character, the form that we will be submitting, as I said, we will actually be submitting this form the data that the form is looking for, go look at the page source. Let's scroll down a little. All right, the form is posting to forward slash speed, forward slash HTML. It posts an input field with the name of amount. That's the, uh, the number of items we want. That's our numeric value. And then it also posts uh, several radio boxes or uh, an actual radio value named what. And depending on which one you select, your options are paras for paragraphs, words, bytes, and lists are your four options. So we need to convert your P's, W's, B's, and L's to paras, words, bytes, and lists. So that's pretty simple. We'll just throw in a little if statement. If query one equals W, then we'll say query one equals words. Simple enough. Else if Query 1 equals P, query 1 paras. 
space these over a little bit just to make them look a little nicer. Okay, so here we have query one equals, and this is just a fallback. If you enter some random character, it'll default back to words instead of failing, you know, whatever. So let's change this to bytes and this to lists. Change the letter. So now if you enter a W, it'll be converted to words. P will be converted to paras, B to bytes, L to lists, and anything else will be automatically converted back to words. All right, so the next thing we want to do is to set up our form that is going to be posted. To do that, we're going to create an array. And since we know that we're going to be posting this amount field and the what field, that's what we're going to be sending. So we're going to send amount. We're going to set that to query zero and what query one. Query one has been set here. Query zero was set up here when you split the text. That's why I said that you may want to add checks to make sure everything was entered because otherwise this is just going to fail miserably and cause a lot of problems. Next, you want to create your URL. We know it's going to post to... All right, the next step is we will be using the PHP curl function to actually request the HTML data or actually post the fields or the form to Lipsum.com and request the output from Lipsum.com. Pre-made curl function to try to save a little bit of time. Uh, we will have to add one extra function here and that is to, or I will walk through all of it in just a second and explain what everything is. Fields. Okay, so here we are initializing curl, creating a variable to hold our timeout, setting the URL for curl, Return transfer is makes it return a string value, setting your connection timeout, and this is where the magic occurs. This is where it tells it to use this array to post that field. This is where it's posting the actual form data to the site. So then you're executing curl and grabbing the string result and saving it into this variable. So from here, the only things left to do are to fire up our HTML DOM parser. We're going to use the HTML variable and say string get HTML and pass it the string value that we already have from curl and then finally we're just going to trim the result do an HTML find and as I mentioned this is just like uh, jQuery we're going to look for the lipsum object and I will show you why really quick come back over and submit this function or submit this form if we view the page source your actual output is right here inside of a div named Lipsum or with an ID of Lipsum. So we're going to look for Lipsum. We're going to look for the first instance of it. It's a zero index so we will start at zero and the only other thing to show you here is we're going to go back to our HTML DOM parser into the manual. I'm going to show you how to pick out exactly what you want. There's different ways to pick out values. You can grab the tag of the element, the outer text, the inner text and the plain text. As you can see, the plain text strips out all HTML tags. The inner text removes the outer object and keeps all HTML tags within it. The outer text will grab the actual object as well. And tag grabs just the tag of the element that you are referencing. So for this example, we're going to use inner text. That way we can keep all of the paragraph tags and everything else in our output. So let's kick back over here, enter text, and pending that everything looks correct, we should be able to fire up text edit and tell Alfred that we want lipsum text and we want eight words. Our text is ready. Paste it. And there's our paragraph tags with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words. Try one more with lipsum text. We want two paragraphs. Paste it in. There's one paragraph. Ends here. Clear all that out real quick. Let's do one more quick example. We want two lists. And this is a little harder to see, but you've got a paragraph tag. And then you've got your second list that is going to be formatted the exact same way. It's just not formatted really pretty when it comes out. But for dummy text, it's not really that important. That is about it. If you need any help with creating scripts, help creating this script or working with it, feel free to contact me on Twitter at, at JDFWarrior. Be sure to check out my Tumblr at JDFWarrior.tumblr.com. I've got plenty of sample scripts 
uh, already available that you can pick through, look at, see how everything works, figure out things on your own. Or if you've got any other questions, just hit me up on Twitter and I hope this helped. Thanks guys. Bye.